Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and this is my walkthrough for free response question number seven of the 2025 AP Chemistry exam. This is a short free response question worth a total of four points. That's about 9% of the entire free response section. As I record this video, the questions have just been posted to the College Board's website, so this is not an official key. I'm not an official spokesman for the College Board. I'm just an AP Chemistry teacher who's been teaching this class for a really long time. Remember that even if your method or explanation does not match mine exactly, any answer that is chemically correct should receive full credit. And if you find this video helpful, please hit that like button and share this video with a friend. I really appreciate your support. It's a lot of work, but I hope my videos have been helpful to you this year. Thanks again. Now, here's question number seven. Question seven involves the glycolate ion, C2H3O3 negative. And it says it acts as a base in aqueous solution. And we have a Lewis diagram for the ion here uh, shown in the question. Part A says on the Lewis diagram in part A, circle the atom that accepts the proton when the glycolate ion reacts with water. One thing that we need to realize here is that an acid is often going to have a COOH tail on the end of it. And I see a COO where an H could very easily uh, come in here. So that last oxygen right there that has the six valence electrons around it, that's the one that you want to circle. That's the one that is going to be uh, attracting that H plus uh, when it accepts the proton. So if you said that and circled that one, give yourself a point for part A. Now, part B, we have this other uh, acid-base question here. It says, when the glycolate ion reacts with water, it forms glycolic acid, according to that equation that we see here. And there's a KB expression. It tells us in part B, at 25 degrees Celsius, a 2.5 molar solution of glycolate is found to have a hydroxide concentration of 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth moles per liter. And part one says calculate the value of KB for the glycolate ion. So probably the easiest thing to do here is just to write out the equation and set up an ice box if you like. Now you don't have to do an ice box for this, but it's kind of out of force of habit. I find it's easier to do it this way. We know that the initial concentration of the glycolate ion is 2.5 molar. So I'm gonna put that in my initial value. And my initial values for the products, of course, will be zero. I don't care about water because it's a liquid. And we know that uh, at equilibrium, the hydroxide ion concentration is 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. So that goes into the equilibrium uh, uh, position there for hydroxide. Now the change of hydroxide from zero to 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth is, well, positive. 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. And so since hydroxide and glycolic acid are in a one to one ratio, I know that the increase of the glycolic acid will also have to be plus 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. And the change of the glycolate ion will have to be negative 1.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. And that's approximately still about 2.5. So it didn't really change much. I'm gonna take these equilibrium values and plug them into the KB expression that we have here. It's also given to us up in the problem. And we just plug those values in and we find that the value of KB is 6.8 times 10 to the negative 11. So give yourself a point if you did all that work and got the right answer. Now part B2 says using your answer to part B1, calculate the value of Ka for glycolic acid at 25 degrees Celsius. Well, we know that Ka times Kb equals Kw. And at 25 degrees Celsius, and that's the temperature we're at, Kw is one times 10 to the negative 14th. So I just plug it in here and I find that Ka is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by that KB value that I just uh, computed, 6.8 times 10 to the negative 11th. And so if my math is right, the KA is about 1.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. So if you did that calculation and got the answer, give yourself a point for that as well. Now, the last question here says that we have a reaction mechanism that we can produce uh, glycolic acid from the hydrolysis of methylglycolate and we have a proposed mechanism. A student claims that H3O plus is a catalyst for the reaction. 
Do you agree or disagree? Justify your answer based on the mechanism given. Well, I would agree with the statement. And the reason for that is that the H3O plus ion is a reactant in an early step, and it's a product in a later step. As you can see, it gets basically chewed up in step one and then spit out again in step two. And that substance, the H3O plus, does not appear in the overall balanced equation. And so all of this is indicative of the fact that H3O plus is a catalyst. And so if you answer that one correctly with a uh, good explanation. Give yourself a point for that one as well for answering correctly question number 7c on the 2025 AP Chemistry exam. So, how did you do? Leave a comment down below. I'll try to respond to as many as I can. Although around AP exam time, things get really busy for me, so please don't feel too bad if I don't reply to your comment personally. Don't forget to watch my walkthrough videos for all the other AP Chem 2025 free response questions. Now the official answer keys will be posted to AP Central sometime in late summer 2025. Thanks again for watching. I wish you all the best in your academic pursuits and I hope to see you again soon.